making a salad for lunch today. Pretty simple. Lettuce, I'm gonna grate some carrot, fresh chili. Um, I'll probably just put like lemon juice, salt, pepper, oil um, in here. And then I'm cooking up some chicken as well. And Brandon said they have to do a bit of work today, but that's okay. I'm gonna make him lunch. And then I think I may actually do some gardening. It's such a beautiful sunny day. Like, I feel like I said to you guys maybe a couple of days or a couple of weeks ago, like we've had like really unseasonably warm weather. It's winter here, but it's so nice outside at the minute. So you might even eat lunch outside and then do some gardening. And then I'm thinking uh, maybe even a bubble bath would be a good idea. We'll see where I end up. I've made some uh, garlic, honey and soy dressing for the chicken too. So simple, but it's one of my favorite things. I'm gonna put this in, kind of let it like marinate a bit and like caramelize so the sauce should thicken. And then I'll just pop the chicken on top of the salad, I reckon. Here she is all done. Honestly, the most simple salad ever. And of course had to put garlic aioli on the top. Like, hello, who doesn't love garlic aioli? But I will say, um, if you did want to make this and you don't like spicy, maybe ditch the chili. I put three chilies in this, so it's quite spicy. Um, it might be a little bit too much for you if you don't like spice. And also make sure that you season the salad. It's like the most important thing with salad, salt and pepper. Otherwise it just, I don't know, doesn't taste good. And the salad's just got, yeah, just lemon juice on it. So easy, so delicious and quick. But I think I'm gonna go eat this outside because it's just too beautiful. We're back on it with the seeds. So backstory, cause I know you guys saw us doing seeds. How long ago was that that we were like? It was a while ago. It was a little while ago. Okay. Um, but we, we planted a heap in some compost, like dirt that we've had outside for ages and they failed. We've had them upstairs. We've been nurturing them. They weren't growing. So today, well, it had fresh grass clippings in it as well. Cause I'd mixed like lawn clippings in that soil. You just think it was too rich. I think it was too rich. Yeah. I think that the seedlings grew and then they just kind of got burnt. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I went and picked up this seed rating, oh, seed rating. rating. I can't even talk. I feel like, I feel like there wasn't enough sauce. Like I'm still hungry after that salad. Oh, okay. Do you feel hungry? I mean, uh, I put. I had a pretty big breakfast though. I put three quarters of the chicken on yours to be fair. Okay. So let's try it again. Seed raising mix. And we're putting it in these little pots and then we're going to, we've got all of these seeds. Um, the other thing, oh, we've had one that's broken open. I think that's corn. I think there's corn floating around in the bag. Um, we're a third of the way through August? About. Yes. Pretty much. Um, which means it's spring in like three, oh, three weeks. Yep. Soon. Holy crap. I feel like winter's gone so fast. Oh, you did that last time. I was cute as. Um, so we can actually plant seeds to grow into seedlings now that can go in the ground in spring. Yes. So I'm going to have a little look through these and see what I can find. So shall I go through these and sort out which ones we could plant early spring? Yes. This makes me extra excited. Oh, pumpkin. Do we want to try pumpkin? It, it takes over some like... little, um, little tiny little pumpkins. See, look. Is that corn? That is corn. Yeah, I thought it was. Oh, it's come out of this. Here it is. Sweet corn. I'll put it back in. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. We're going to do beetroot first, but we have 14,000 different kinds of beetroot, literally. Do you want to do the heirloom? Some of the heirloom seeds? Yeah. Or was it the heirloom seeds that we had the issue with? So the yellow ones took a lot longer to germinate. The golden? Yes, but they still grew. So that's the golden. Um, oh, this is the one with the striped concentric circles of red and white. Well, do we want to put more than one seed in a punnet? I think so. Cause yeah. they're, they're pretty big, aren't they? Oh, I really do have hiccups. Yeah. Let's put three, three per mm. one. Chio Kaga. Yeah. That's the one with the concentric circles. Okay. One is small in size, but big on flavor. Let's do one of these and these as well so okay. one, 
Two. They're such tiny little seeds. These ones are, yeah. Yeah. Three. We might just hey, have George. To... Yeah, we know you're there, darling. You, yeah. You are looking cute. I haven't forgotten you. You're still beautiful. They're all sleeping. I took Emma for a really big long walk this morning after I did my run. It was over. It was about five. Another five and a half kilometers, actually. So she's pooped today. If you want to, how much beetroot do we want to do? We eat lots of beetroot. We do eat lots of beetroot. We love it. It is good. I always think the next day that I've gone into kidney Renal failure. failure. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, um, that's a weird color. <laughs> Every single, sometimes I've actually forgotten that I've had it too yeah. and I've been like, oh dear, something's seriously wrong here. But it was the beetroot. Crimson blue. I don't find that that really happens with the beetroot that we buy at the store. No. It seems like the Didn't stuff you get at home much. is like way more intense. Hey little granolot. Hey. Uh, yeah, you want to say hi? Uh, yeah. Mm. You're so funny, Georgia. You're such a funny little nugget gremlin pom. Yes, you really are. Oh, I wanted to do some beans. Yep. It just depends on... Do you want to just do the dwarf ones? I feel like they were delicious. The dwarf ones are easier. Yeah. Unless you want to grow a big trellis. But they do... I mean, do this they... is what I can remember from Dad doing them. Yeah. They just go crazy. Do they? Yeah. So shall we do the dwarfs? I think so. All right. So you, then you can just have a short little trailer. I think. Yeah. True. It's so satisfying growing your own vegetables. Oh, we're definitely doing the chili. A hundred thousand million percent. Chili. Yep. It's, and then you wanted to do a bunch of tomatoes. We've got so many different types. So it just depends on yeah which which tomatoes that you want to do. Here is our batch of seedlings that we're working on. We're going to try like a whole tray of dirt. I don't know. See if it works. But we have got dwarf green beans, lots of different varieties of beetroot, five different varieties of yes. beetroot, uh, chili, zucchini, pumpkin, corn, and basil is all planted in this one. And then we have apple, cucumber. This is curled and Italian parsley. Tomato, tomato, we're not sure we planted a bunch of different kinds. A strawberry and coriander. So hopefully these little babies do a little bit better than the last lot because yeah. it's a proper seed raising mix. Better mix. Brandon's on the uh, <laughs> for spritzio. <laughs> I'm curious to see if this is work if like if this works, it's way it's a way better way to do it. Well, until you have to try and get them out. Yeah, I just figured we could like spoon them out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with a spoon. These are the pots that you can actually just plant in the ground and then they disintegrate. But I feel like you just peeled them off last time even. Yeah, there wasn't... They weren't... They weren't great. Well, they were good. There wasn't much mm. structure left to them once the no. seeds had grown out. No, no. Which I guess is the whole idea. Mm. But we're going to take these. These are going to live in the bedroom, the spare bedroom upstairs. We've got this patch that gets like a really good amount of sunlight. And it's pretty protected in there. Like, it doesn't get too cold overnight. Um, yeah, we'll keep you updated on how they go. So, we're on Mission Health. <laughs> we, it's two weeks now that we haven't had any sugar, any fried food, any, like, we've been so diligent. And Brandon goes to me before, oh, I'm having cravings today for anything and everything. So, I've uh, said to him... Let's make sugar-free iced coffees that taste like they're full of sugar. Look at all this mess I'm making. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's coffee. Spilt coffee. Coffee everywhere. Um, so that's what we're doing. That's what we're making now. Brandon's having caffeine, but I tell you what, it's 20 to 5 p.m. There's no chance in hell that I'm going to have caffeine now. <laughs> I'll be awake for the next 24 hours. Oh, I don't think I'll be getting good sleep tonight. With, pal with palpitations. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make mine with just a decaf pod, but I'm gonna show you how to do a sugar-free, amazing tasting iced coffee. We could do mine versus yours again. Ooh, yeah. I'm on. Different recipes. I'm in it. Oh, different re 
What are you gonna put in? Oh yes, because you are. Secret you yeah. All right, it's on. <laughs> it's on. You're like yours is gonna taste like shit. <laughs> Caught me grabbing my nuts. What? You turned it on and I was like, oh. <laughs> I didn't even realize. So I've got ice in the glass. Um, if, if this is a race, I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's like you had caffeine already. <laughs> oh, it's like I'm excited for the caffeine. I know, you're just excited about it. It's placebo effect before the fact. <laughs> What do they call that? Precebo? Precebo effect. effect. Precebo. Decaf pod, you guys. Not very exciting, but that's what's happening. Here we go, guys. This is how it's done. Liquid butterscotch flavored stevia. I'm getting spicy. How's it an iced coffee if it's butterscotch flavored? Iced coffees are always sweet. They are, you're right. It's like a, it's like a dessert. So, let's smash a shit ton of that in there. <laughs> and then, after we're done that, powdered stevia as well. Because Whoa. if you go, going hard with all of this, it's too much butterscotch flavor. I'm just not okay with it. I'm gonna go one scoop of powdered stevia. Okay, okay, okay. Give that a little, a little mix. Yes. All right, that is icy. Then, shall I put? No, nah, I'm gonna go. This first. So, no sugar added vanilla ice cream. This stuff's delicious. And the caramel. They make a caramel version of this and it's freaking amazing. It just, oh, it tastes so good. So, I'm going to go scoop. I'm basically a cooking show right now. And ice cream in. Yeah. Brandon thinks I'm already starting behind because... I'm using almond milk. <laughs> I'm using dairy ice cream and almond milk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make any sense, does it? It's less calories if you're uh, counting them cake house. Counting them cake house. And then this is the almond milk, Australia's own. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. If I threw this almond milk in a pool with a bunch of different almond milks from, from other countries, it would always come first. <laughs> we really do clean up at the swimming, don't we? We do well in the swimming, yes. Yeah. And here we go. She's going in. Oh, look at all of that creamy goodness. Oh, my friends, that is amazing. Yes. And then... <gasps> Look at it on the side. That is freaking cool as Brandon's like. <laughs> Doesn't matter how it looks. It's how it tastes. It'll taste like a whole lot of sugar that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> and there you go. It's as easy as that. And he's still making his coffee over there. Real coffee. <laughs> Real coffee. I ju uh, are you just going to have one shot? No. Nah. Oh, Bob, it's late at night. Well, you're going to have to deal with me. I know. We're going to have to watch 10 movies. I bet you'll be awake at 2 a.m. Brandon will be like, let's go for a bike ride. <laughs> Push up now. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy this tasty Maybe. morsel. Look at Georgie. She's so cute. What are you doing? Oh, she ran over. Hello. Come here, Georgie. Hello. Come on. Up. Come on. Come on, up. Oh, she's so good for you. Okay. Uh, you're the favorite. It hurts my soul sometimes. <laughs> you're my favorite too, so it makes sense. All right, this is Brandon's one. Emma's eaten something probably inappropriate. She's coughing. Emmy, love, do you need to have a little drink of water, darling? She's just down there. 
Oh, baby cakes. Yeah, get some water. Go get some water. <laughs> I like when she walks, her butt actually waddles. <laughs> so, Brandon has got white chocolate protein out. Casein, yes. He's putting protein in his. Does that mean yours holds a much greater nutritional value? Uh, maybe. Mm. I don't know about nutritional. Yours has got 22 G's of protein. Yeah, mate. <laughs> and glutamine. Stop it. Did you actually put glutamine in no, it as well? Oh. <laughs> I was going to say that's. Oh, you're going to have it in that cup. The cup that doesn't have a straw that's long enough. Yep. <laughs> that's the one. He's taking the protein around the corner. Mine tastes so good. So good. It's very cold. It's very icy. <laughs> so he's brewing up his coffee. Oh, is your coffee done? Nearly. Coffee's nearly done. I'm going to pinch this. Excuse you. Some stevia. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> I'll allow it. Put a little bit of that in there. Yeah. To make it extra sweet. A little bit of this. Yeah. All right. He's gonna go blend again. By the sounds of things. Yep. We're just waiting here with great anticipation. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll just put this down because it's so, a, it's a lot to hold the camera. Ice. Oh, he's putting ice in a cup. Yeah, Can everybody ice. please comment down below that Nikia's iced coffee looked way better? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes the fresh coffee over the ice. All right. Oh, Bob, how many shots is that? A lot. Is that like three coffees? Nah, there's a lot of ice in there. You might have to do a workout tonight to burn through <laughs> all the caffeine. <laughs> oh, now he's adding the vanilla protein. So casein protein, it's like a bit thicker. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah, okay. Sludgy, it's judgy. Have you ever, um, have you ever added coffee? Have I ever been told that I make awesome iced coffee? Yes. <laughs> Yours is like an iced coffee, the gym version. All right, he's mixed it in. All right, it's coming in with a spoon now. Oh yeah, ice cream, yep. I'll see you. Oh, and he's rolled his ice cream into a ball. I'm trying to. We do have it a proper ice cream scoop. Yeah, that takes the fun out of it. <laughs> no, no talent required. Yeah. I'll probably fast forward through this half an hour <laughs> later. <laughs> oh, look at you. Look at you. Mm. Look at you. I'm just going to eat the ice cream. <laughs> Have a taste. Okay. I'm going to taste. I haven't tasted mine yet. Are you going to put the ice cream in? I can't even taste any coffee in that. Because it's all sweet. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. I feel like yours kind of tastes like iced coffee. I think it tastes exactly like iced coffee. It tastes like iced coffee, but almost like it's been mixed with cake mix or something. Oh, no. <laughs> You're wrong, Kia. <Nikita>. Yeah, <laughs> wrong, clearly. <laughs> clearly wrong. Oh, here you come in for the steal. Yeah, I like mine better. But yours is more nutritionally complete. What do you have to say? I'll give you that. So yours has got actually no milk in it too. Little bit. Little bit. I'll put some milk in this. Oh yeah. Mm. But does that get the craving? Does that kick it? I think so. Yeah. Taste that. Mm. Oh, now I've got a head freeze. 
Well, see, I think that tastes like a butthole. Really? Mmm. Like, super processed. Super processed? Are you going to drink that as well? He's just poured the rest of that coffee into the... Honey, that is too much caffeine. Yeah, I'm not going to drink it. <laughs> I'm not even going to drink it. Should I um, start chopping up the veggies for dinner? What time do we need to put the roast on? It's 5 o'clock. Yeah, we'll start getting it ready now. Yeah. Okay, roast veggies are all done. Yum! I feel like I have this notorious habit of making way too many. And I'm pretty sure I've done it again. But Brandon's over here. He's made his signature... <gasps> what are we going to call this? Brarinade. Brarinade. <laughs> Come for the lamb. Brasting. Fresh... What is it? Fresh garlic. Fresh thyme. thyme fresh rosemary. And garlic. Salt and pepper. Salt and pepper absolutely delicious he smothers it like all over the roast so i'm gonna put these in now and then uh, i had planned on having a bubble bath do you think yeah all right you fit it in. do i have time i'm not i'm not convinced i just don't know <laughs> top rack bottom rack So we're multitasking at the minute. We're working on our save the date. Do you know how I told you guys we we're doing like a digital save the date? And then we'll send out the actual proper hard copy invitations for the wedding. And Brandon's finishing up dinner and it looks freaking amazing. Hey guys, so I just wanted to come and, I don't know, have a little catch up, have a little chat with you. Um, obviously, uh, you know, I like these videos I do for you guys so that you guys can enjoy them. Um, and I know that a lot of you in, like really, really enjoy the vlogs and stuff, but honestly, it, they help me too. Like, it's so nice for me to be, and look, I'm covered in swatches. I've been filming <laughs> makeup videos today. Um, it's so nice for me as well. Like, it kind of gives me someone to talk to, if that makes sense. Like, I really, really enjoy... <sighs> And even though, like, you're not there and I know that you're on the other side of the camera, like, I do still feel like you're here. I do still feel like I'm actually talking to you. Um, So I wanted to sit down and have a little chat and, you know, just talk about some stuff that's going on, really. Um, Some stuff that I've been struggling with and some stuff that's, I don't know, I guess a reality of, you know, the world at the minute. So I've got both Emma and Annabelle here and they're both very, very excited as I look at her. <laughs> You want to cuddle with your sister? Yeah, she's just there, honey. I feel like mine and Emma's hair is almost matching at the minute, actually. We we are twins. Um, so obviously you will have seen in my vlogs lately, um, the last couple of weeks, um, that we ke we keep going in and out of lockdowns here in Australia, and I feel like, like I always try to, you know, I I. I want to keep my channel like a really like well both of my channels like my makeup channel and my vlog channel like a place that's happy I don't like to put anything negative uh, out there I know that it's like an escape for a lot of you guys it's somewhere that a lot of you can go to for comfort and for distraction and for something else um you know just like happiness like you know other stuff going on um but at the same time like I think it is still important to talk about things that you know, are hard for all of us and talk about things that are difficult. And I, I don't know, maybe it is helpful for a lot of you guys even to, I don't know, hear me talk about things that aren't, you know, things aren't always amazing. Like that's the thing about social media. Like it always looks like we're super happy. It always looks like we're doing really, really well and like achieving things. And, but social media, it's no different to your own social media. Like we don't, choose to put things on the internet that aren't like the best version of ourselves if that makes sense like we don't choose to put pictures up that we feel you know really awful in and we don't put videos up where we're upset and it's the same like this it's the same as you guys like I'm sure that you wouldn't be posting like basically social media is like literally like a snapshot of the best of the best like the best of the best and like the vlog is you know, happy times from the week. It's not like really awful sad times from the week. Um, 
And even though I'm always like super cheery and super happy and like we do have a lot of amazing things happening at the minute. Obviously the wedding. Um, I'm so excited. We actually sent out our save the dates last night. Um, that's something that I had been wanting to get done um, because yeah, the wedding's in March and like people need to know and I was starting to panic. I was like, oh my gosh, like are people even going to be available? Like I feel like it's too close. Um, so we did some digital save the dates just so that people could hold the date and then we're going to, it's actually really, really good. We did it through paperless post. I really, really enjoyed using that. Obviously like not sponsored or anything. Like we just found it online um, and we paid for it ourselves and everything, but it was so easy. So it sends the invitation out and then um, all of the guests actually like they're able to put their mailing address in and it collects all the mailing addresses and then you can export the list and send it to like whoever's making the invitations. Um, it's just awesome. Like I, I, I really, really do recommend it. Um, I would even consider like digital proper wedding invitations. Like it was beautiful. You could design the whole thing. It was really, really pretty. Um, yeah, we were happy with how, how it went out. So they've been sent out and obviously that's really exciting. The wedding's really exciting. Um, but I genuinely have been having a really hard time with all of the lockdowns lately um i used to bounce back pretty easily i used to i don't know use it as a time to almost kind of like reset i would use it as an excuse to work really really hard like work longer hours like work at night and work weekends um i don't know i always tried to make it the most productive that i could and get the most out of it and do lots of self-care and have like lots of bubble baths and stuff but lately like and because we just continually keep going into lockdowns here like they have like it's genuinely started to get to me I just I don't know I think and I had a real moment because obviously we came out of our fifth lockdown two weeks ago we were out of lockdown for only a week and then we were back into lockdown again and I just had this real like overwhelming sadness like is life ever going to go back to what it used to be like like I all of the things and like Brandon and I are both the same. Like it's the little things in life that we hold the dearest and it's the little things that we like really, really enjoy. And for us, it was things like, you know, going to the cinemas together and having an ice cream and, you know, or, or going like spending time with family. Like these are the things that I don't, I don't care about, you know, like a lot of people are really struggling with the inability to be able to, you know, like we obviously can't go on vacations. We can't, travel overseas we can't travel interstate really like we're we're quite stuck oh i hear movement hey baby hey hey look at emma what you doing i'm just talking on the blog ah i yeah. thought you were on a phone call no nah. how'd your meeting hey, go Tommy. yeah good yeah for like an hour and a half good though yeah not nah, good feeling good yeah feeling motivated feeling good Will you be able to tell me? Is it is probably stuff that you can't talk about on camera, right? Oh, nah, not really. It's all technical bullshit that no one would really be interested in. I'm but... interested, baby. <laughs> I'm always interested in what you do. Um, I mean, there's always. goods and bads, but okay. Um, yeah. 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 I'll Good. tell you later. Okay. I'll be down soon. Okay. I finished my other videos, so. Awesome. Yeah. You look. Stunning, by the way. Oh, thank you, Papa. I love you. <laughs> you're um, you're color matching Emma. I know, and my hair. Emma was <laughs> sitting on me before, and I was like, I'm literally Emma. Oh, thank you. I've got brown um like pants on, so I'm like brown and black, just like One Emma. Of them. Little ferals. <laughs> <sighs> I probably want to come downstairs with you. Come on, Dookie. Come on. <laughs> we still call Annabelle Dookie. It's the best name. Bob Duke. You want to go, Emma? Come on, Emma. Come on. Thanks, gorgeous. Can you shut Love that you. door? Yeah. Thanks. Love you. I'll Love see you me. soon. <laughs> Kitty. Um, okay, what was I saying? Oh, a lot of people are struggling with not being able to go on, you know, holidays and like big international trips and stuff, but it's not even that for me. Like I've never really been a huge holiday kind of person. It's not um I don't know, something that's ever, I don't, I almost feel like going on holidays doesn't make me feel relaxed and doesn't make me feel like I've had time off. Like I'm a homebody and I sort of recharge from being alone. 
and being quiet and doing quiet things and doing alone things. Um, and so for me, it's just, it's little aspects of life that I used to hold so dear, you know, like going out for dinner with Brandon, like we used to have date night. I mean, we do like, we love our at home date nights. Like, don't get me wrong. Like we absolutely love doing them, but I just miss all of those little small things that, you know, we can't do anymore. And I don't know what is going to happen. Like the issue here in Australia is our vaccination program is so far behind. Like we're supposed to be pretty much fully vaccinated by now. And I think only almost 20% of the population is done. Um, there's so much misinformation. There's so much stuff that's going around and people are just buying into it. Um, and it's really disappointing because, you know, in in one breath, people are complaining about lockdowns and being like, well, I don't want to be in lockdown. Like, you can't tell me what. And people are protest protesting and it's so embarrassing because literally people are dying. People are dying in this pandemic. People have lost their jobs. People have lost everything. And you're complaining about having to wear a mask and you're complaining about having to be in lockdown. Like, yeah, it's hard. It's it's not an easy thing to do. It's not a walk in the park. It's not a sunny day all the time. Um, it's really difficult. And like I'm saying, like, I find it really difficult. I find it really hard. But at the same time, you know, this is how we keep people alive. This is how we keep people healthy. This is how we protect those that we love. And this is how we protect those that are vulnerable and those that are unable to protect themselves. And it's just... Oh, I find, and the whole the whole topic, and like especially like with the vaccine and everything, it's so polarizing. Like all of these people that I've literally known my entire life, you know, I've grown up with them, I've gone to school with them, I'm have been friends with them. Um, you come into a pandemic, and uh, I almost feel like I don't recognize a lot of people. Like I'm so like they're posting on you know, their own social media, like on Facebook and things like that, um, being like, you know, screw the police and don't listen to the, the lockdown rules and, you know, like, who cares? And it's all like a conspiracy and, you know, anti-vaxxers and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, I thought I knew these people. Like, I literally thought that I knew these people. And then it's just taken this situation for me to be like, whoa, I did not realise how many people are so easily swayed by like, so one person has an opinion and some, and it's not an educated opinion. It's not, it's not a researched opinion. It's not an opinion that has any grounds like ethically or morally or scientifically. Like it's just an opinion for some reason. And I don't know if it's like, because people just want to stand up and be like, Oh, you know, I'm not going to, you can't tell me what to do. You can't control me. But all these other people just blindly follow that opinion and then, you know, spread all this misinformation about something that's so insanely serious and that's affecting the whole world. Like it just, I found it to be really, really interesting. And I, I'm, I come from a medical background um, you know, you guys know, and this, oh, this is actually something that I got really emotional about earlier because obviously we're getting our vaccinations tomorrow. Um, I was going through all of my paperwork and my degrees and my awards and stuff, um, earlier, um, because I, when we booked the vaccination appointment, um, it come up, like it came up with a little message that said that we have to like show like previous vaccination history. Um, at the time of the appointment and I kept all of my vaccination history with all of my like my nursing degree my paramedics degree and like my registrations and um, you know my certificates and all my extra training and everything and I, I used to keep that all together because whenever you apply for a job in health here in Australia you have to show full vaccination history because you need to be fully vaccinated to be able to work in a hospital to be able to work in an ambulance or whatever um I got really emotional going through it because I was trying to find my vaccination record and I got really emotional because I was like, oh my God, like it's this whole part of my life that almost feels like never existed. Like I was at university for six years and I worked my absolute butt off. Like I missed out on so much of my personal life. I missed out on family things. I missed out on friends' birthdays. 
Um, I was studying so hard. I was working at the same time to be able to put myself through uni. Like I don't have rich parents who could pay, you know, my university bills. I don't have like I was never like well off or anything. Like I had to do it all myself. Um, and it was just crazy, like going through that stuff and being like, oh, like I've, I, it's, it's like I forgot that I even had that entire life. And I'm so proud of those achievements, honestly. Like I'm so proud of everything that I did achieve. And I don't know, is it nostalgic? I, I got, I got quite emotional. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> remember when I did this? And I like it's something that I'm like proud of but I got awards for having the highest grades in the entire uh, campus in like my degrees and whatnot I've got honors um I worked really really hard I really wanted to be I basically don't do things half assed like I want to be the best that I can be at whatever it is and you know I worked really really hard and I I got amazing grades like if there's one thing that I'm good at and it was the same through school it's getting really good grades I'm like a I'm like a secret nerd Okay, you may not, you may not be able to tell from, you know, I, I come on the internet and I talk about makeup, but I'm a secret nerd. I really am. Um, yeah, so I come from a medical background and for me, the vaccination is an absolute no-brainer. Like it's an absolute no-brainer. All of these conspiracy theories about how it's not researched and stuff like <laughs> Those opinions are coming from people that don't understand how the system works and that don't understand how research works. So obviously people are freaking out that the vaccines haven't been tested over the same amount of years that other vaccines have. Um, and the thing is, and this is like, oh, it just makes me so frustrated and I really have to hold my tongue because people like are spouting out all their opinions and I don't want to be the person that goes around and, you know, tells people, oh, you're wrong and like be all high and mighty. Like people are absolutely entitled to their own opinion. You're entitled to believe whatever you want to believe. You're entitled to make whatever choice you want to make. But the thing about the vaccines is you form these opinions on completely incorrect information and then you make this decision that not only puts yourself at risk, but you're actually putting the rest of the population at risk like that's the thing that gets me you're putting the people at risk who are unable to get vaccinated so people who have allergies um and things like that like newborn babies like they're the ones that are at risk and it just breaks my heart because it's insane so normally when a vaccine is developed um it's it takes years it's it's like five plus years sometimes it's seven years depending on whatever strain whatever you know the disease is um and the thing that drags it out and the thing that makes it really difficult is number one funding so obviously um you know with covid vaccines the funding all of the funding has been poured into them because we needed them straight away because so many people were dying we needed the vaccines as quick as possible um all of the funding that wouldn't normally go towards a vaccine was being put it on the like was being put on the vaccine so that means that the process is expedited they've got the equipment to do it they've got more scientists they've got more facilities like there's more money being put into it right but the other thing is and the other thing i don't know if this is what's stopping people from getting it done but you have to have like you have to do controlled trials um, on humans to show the effectiveness of the vaccine and those controlled trials have to be done on people who have whatever the particular disease is now the diseases that we're all vaccinated against are extremely rare so you can imagine that the like it takes a lot longer to say for example collect a hundred people or a thousand people or whatever of a particular disease that's very rare that you know you might see in the population one in ten thousand people all of a sudden COVID comes along and we have hundreds of thousands of people who have the disease, hundreds of thousands of people who are available for the research, for the controlled trials. It's, it's so much faster when you've got people available, but people think that, I don't know, some schmuck in a lab has just designed a random vaccine and is just being like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, it'll do and putting it out to the public like I think that's what people believe like I feel like people genuinely think that it's not it's not properly researched it's not properly like done and the 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 regulations and the restrictions and stuff that we have here in Australia are next level like teeth whitening products that every other country 
in the world is able to freely use or sunscreen products that every other country is able to use. We're not even allowed them here because our like TGA and our chemical guidelines and stuff are so insanely strict. Like these vaccines have been developed <laughs> firstly with a phenomenal amount of resources and like I believe in them 100% I've always believed in all vaccinations um, I'm fully vaccinated I get my flu vaccine um, you know I, I do it all the time um, I think people I think that people think that it's just like I don't know like it's like all this like made up thing I'm not sure exactly what it is um and it's so polarizing because people are either so against it or, you know, they're happy to have it. And I don't know, it's just been really interesting, like, to see the difference, to see the divide, to see, I don't know. And it's frustrating because there's been things that have gone viral on Instagram, like people who are developing conditions after having the vaccine, like, you know, neural conditions, like NMD and things like that. Um and they're writing on these videos, like underneath these videos, you know, I've got this. And this is not to take away, like I just want to say this is not to take away from what those people are experiencing because it is awful. Like it is absolutely horrible to go through something like that. You literally need physio for like six months. You have to like relearn how to use your body. You've got tremors. There's like a lot of pain, like myalgia and um, things like Gillian Barre. Like it's very similar to all that kind of stuff. Um... I don't want to take away from how horrible that experience is for those people because it genuinely is awful. Like, it's truly, truly awful. But you can develop those that condition. And this is the thing, like, they're writing in these Instagram posts that are going viral and everybody is just sheep. Like, people are just reading what they see online, whatever some random person puts online, like on Instagram, rather than listening to people who are professional and who have studied and spent their entire lives dedicated towards these kinds of things, like doctors and scientists and things like that. Um, but these, these conditions aren't caused by the vaccine um you can literally you can get it literally from standing on a piece of glass you can get it from being particularly stressed about an exam you can get it from any vaccine you can get it from any kind of trauma you can get it from scratching like a scratch on your head and then your body reacts it's basically like a an autoimmune response and your your body kind of attacks its own nervous system and they will write you know and the videos are awful, like people, you know, the, I saw this one of this girl and she was struggling to walk, um, you know, she had tremors, like her husband was having to like help her work, walk and hold her up and stuff. And it was awful, like just awful for the two of them. But for her to take that and <laughs> post it on the internet and turn it into, it's because of the COVID vaccine that I've got that, is just... It's crazy because it's 100% inaccurate. And I did also notice, and um, I've had other people who have seen it happen as well, um, deleting comments from healthcare professionals who were saying the same thing. Like, no, like you can get this condition from literally anything. Like, it's, you know, you could get it from a sinus infection. Like, I don't know. It's really frustrating. It's been really difficult. And seeing all the crazy stuff that people post online and... You know, I've got people in my own life who see this stuff and believe it. And why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they believe it? Because if you've not, you know, if you don't have a background in this stuff, if you haven't learnt, you know, about this stuff, you wouldn't know. Like, you wouldn't know any better, would you? You wouldn't know that ugh, it's all just misinformation. Like, I don't know. It's just, it's been really hard and... I don't know, I, I saw like some TikTok videos and some other videos, um, you know, of people walking around Melbourne, so in the city in Melbourne and, you know, so many shops shut and so many shops for lease and like never, I just never thought, you know, when you're like safe, you've got like your safe little bubble in the world and you just think that everything's you know, great and nothing's ever going to, I never thought that we would have a worldwide pandemic like this that has just completely changed the way that we live our day-to-day -day lives. It's completely changed. It's taken so much from people. It has killed 
so many people and it breaks my heart to see that happening like you know in India for example like hundreds of thousands of people are losing their lives and then here in Australia we have these idiots who are out on the streets protesting about having to wear a mask like like are you kidding me like if that's the hardest thing that you have to do in your day-to-day -day life to help save people like oh it really really gets to me it's honestly infuriating um imagine we had to go to war this is the this is the thing that i always come back to imagine we had to go to war like i just feel like people nowadays whether it's my generation and the generation underneath us i don't know we haven't experienced like genuine hardships and as a result we're so entitled and we're so i don't know we we just think yeah we're just basically entitled it's like is really the best way to describe it like imagine you know we got drafted for war and we had to go to war like you're complaining about wearing a face mask a freaking face mask like, yeah, it's a little bit uncomfortable. I used to wear face masks for like 12 hours at a time working in theatre. You know, it's not fun, but it's better than dying. It's better than losing all of your family members. And you've got, you know, people who are still alive that fought in World War II, like all of the veterans and stuff who were like, you know, I I went into, I went, I flew to another country. I literally put my life on the line. I was in a war and uh, like we're complaining about having to stay inside and watch Netflix. Like, I don't know. I just feel like I've, I've gotten to a point now where it's really starting to bother me. I've gotten to a point now where I'm so over all the crap on the media. And, and yes, you know, it's your body. It's your choice. I understand that. But I would just encourage people to do a little bit more research. Um, don't just listen to whatever you know Karen is is saying on her Instagram live about how the vaccine's going to be injecting microchips and 5G and Bill Gates DNA into you like this stuff is wild like the things that people have come out with are wild and, and every medication has side effects you know and there was this whole big thing about blood clots and the AstraZeneca vaccine and you know how it's like a one in a million I think one in a, or one in, yeah, one in one million, like, chance of getting a blood clot from the vaccine. And, you know, blood clots aren't fun. Like, you know, we're lucky here in Australia. We have fantastic healthcare and we've got fantastic hospitals and everything. And we pay a lot for it, like, with our tax and our Medicare and stuff. Um, but, you know, a blood clot is a treatable, it's a treatable thing. It's it's a treatable problem. Um I, I took birth control my entire life and that's like a one in 10,000 chance of developing a blood clot. Why are people making such a big deal about a vaccine? Every single medic, every time you take Panadol, every time you take Nurofen, every time you take, I don't know, your statin or your blood pressure medication or your cholesterol medication or your GTNs or whatever it is that you're taking like every single medication has side effects vaccines have side effects you will feel i mean a lot of the time you will feel crappy for a couple of days after taking it you will you know that's your body developing immune an immune response that's your body developing antibodies to fight the virus um it's hard work on your body you know it's it's basically like sending your body into i don't know boot camp for lack of a better word, like to be able to develop antibodies to keep you safe. Like you are going to feel crappy. Um, I don't know. It's, it's hard. It's, I, I just, I, I feel like I've had a really, really hard time and I just wanted to talk about it really, I guess. Um, I'm sure that there are others and please let me know, you know, in the comments, like the stuff that you're seeing and I'm not like, I'm not, and like I said, I don't want to be the person that's like harping on at people and telling people what to do and whatnot. But, you know, it is your choice and I get that. Um, but just do research. You know, don't just believe what, what you read online. Don't just believe 
you know, whatever someone else is saying. And I also feel like this is the first time that I've been like genuinely, like that I felt genuinely scared. Um, you know, when the pandemic first happened, it was uh, those that are chronically ill. It was affecting those who were like the elderly, chronically ill people, um, people with like multiple comorbidities. And, it, you know, it wasn't touching young, like someone like myself, like a young, well, certainly here in Australia, like things are obviously different, you know, in other countries. Like I don't know because I'm not there and I can't speak like finitely on things like that. But, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't affecting us. I was never scared. I, I never felt, um, I knew that people were becoming really, really unwell with it. I knew that it was really, really horrible, but it was only really like seriously taking out those who were already chronically ill and who were very old. Like they were the ones in the hospitals on the ventilators and they were the ones that were passing away from it. But now like this new Delta strain, like it's affecting young people more. It is seriously affecting young people more and it's terrifying. There are so many people in ICU in Sydney and in New South Wales um, that are my age. And like, I'm young, I'm 30, I don't have any health conditions, I don't take any medications, or well, now that I'm not on the pill, I don't take any medications. Um, I'm fit, you know, I, I exercise every day, I run, I lift weights, I'm very, very healthy. It is taking out people like myself, you know, it's it's no longer, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm safe and like we're... <laughs> It's the first time, I guess, that I have felt genuinely, I'm just not going to, I don't want to risk it any longer. And I'm just so glad that Brandon and I have finally become eligible to get the vaccines. Um, the way that they've done it here in Australia is they vaccinated all of the elderly first and all of those, like the people who are chronically ill and whatnot that could have it. Um, and then they were rolling it out to 40 to 60 year olds, but they're finally rolling it out now to 19 to 40 year olds. So we can finally get it. Um, I'm happy to be able to finally get it. I really am. Like I would have got it day one if I could. I'm also very lucky. So my entire family, well, pretty much my entire family work in healthcare. So they've all, they've all had it and they're all fine, obviously. Um, because I technically don't work in healthcare anymore, I wasn't able to get it when they all got it. Um, but I definitely feel better knowing that they've got it and they're protected. And it's just, I, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm not going to wait any longer. Like Brandon, like God forbid something happened to him, honestly. I, it just makes me even sad to even think about it. I'm not going to risk it. Like, and I, I don't know, I just, I just want to say to you guys, like, don't, don't, don't risk it. It's, it's your life. You know, you might read some stupid stuff on the internet and, you know, you might feel like, oh, you know, you can't tell me what to do. You know, you can't tell me how to make my decisions. You can't tell me, don't risk it. Like, it's not worth it. So many people... And young people now who are perfectly fit and healthy with no comorbidities, with no other conditions, um, like it's taking them out. It really is. Like, mm. I've got some friends who are, I think, they're not vocal about it necessarily with me, but who I think are anti-vax. Um, and I don't know how to help. I can't, I mean, you can't make people's decision up for them, but it, it worries me because I'm like, well, you know, now this new, like this new variant, um, what if something happens to them, you know, because they've read stupid stuff online, they've read stupid stuff on the internet. And what if something happens to them? Like, I'd be absolutely heartbroken. Yeah. There's a lot going on. I just feel like I've had a hard time. And last week, you know, like, Oh, everything, I felt like everything literally went wrong with work. Um, and YouTube has been like, really, you know, a lot of pressure lately, like really difficult. People, um, I don't know, I just feel like I'm failing really. It's the best way to describe it. I had this huge conversation with Brandon last night about it. Um, like, 
I don't know. I just wanted to chat. I'm sorry if I've been a bit of a Debbie down. <laughs> like I said, it helps me. It helps me to talk about things and it helps me to, I don't know, get it out, talk about it, get it out. It's healthy. Like we all should be talking. Um, yeah. I'm excited to be vaccinated tomorrow. I'm sad. Today's mum's birthday. It's her last year, so it's her second birthday in lockdown. It's the second time I haven't been able to spend her birthday with her. Um, and we're not going to be out of these lockdowns until, like, until people are vaccinated, until the majority of the population, like, until we have herd immunity. Like, it's going to keep happening because it's the only way to keep people safe. It's the only way to stop the spread. Um... Yeah, and obviously, you know, homeschooling, like homeschooling your kids is hard and being stuck in your house is hard and, you know, being away from your friends and family is hard. It's, you know, I'm not by any means like saying that it's not hard. It's absolutely hard. But at the same time, realistically, it's not much. Like on the scale of hardships of things of what it could be like and if you have a look at other countries you know, what they're going through, what it is like. It's not that hard. Like, you know, we can do it. We're all in this together, guys. We got this. We've absolutely got this. Oh, thanks for listening. I feel like I've just sat here and ranted on and on and on and on and on now. <laughs> but that's what the vlog channel is for, you know. It's this is the place to do it. This is this is the place for it to be done. Um, I might actually, because I'm looking at the clock now and I can see that I've now been talking for 36, well, nearly 37 minutes. So I might even end this week's vlog here. Um, if you guys are interested, you know, if you're interested in hearing how it goes for me and stuff, I can totally update you on how I go with the vaccine. I might be, I might be unwell for the next couple of days. I don't know. Like I might feel crappy. I might be tired. I might, you know, I might feel like I've got flu like symptoms. Um, I'll totally, I can, I'll update, that'll all be in next week's vlog. Um, I'll definitely keep you updated because I'm sure there are people, you know, I understand that you're scared. Like I get it. I understand that you're scared, but uh, Dying from COVID is scarier. Like, realistically, dying from COVID is a whole lot scarier. Um, and, you know, you you drink your alcoholic drinks and you, you smoke your cigarettes and you do your recreational drugs on the weekend. I've never done anything like that. I mean, I, I obviously I drink. Like, I drink wine and stuff. But um, it's just fascinating to see people... Uh, you know, not concerned with any of that stuff, but they're suddenly concerned about a vaccine. It's fascinating. But yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. I am going to end this week's vlog here. Thank you for, I mean, if you're uh, probably no one's even watching, you're probably all, you're probably all left. You're probably like, oh, she's being, she's, you know, you're probably not in the mood for my, for my ramblings, but thank you if you are still here. Hi. Hi, hi from me to you. Hi from my home to your home. Um, I hope that you're doing okay. Um, I'm thinking of all of you. I'm thinking of everyone. It's not. It's not an easy time. And last year, like we were just, it was this huge wait to get the vaccinations, and it was like once they were here, you know, it would be over. There was like this, I don't know, like this false hope of you know, it being over, but because the vaccine rollout here in Australia has just been so slow, um, it's not over. It's not over. And I am scared, actually, that we might not even be able to have our wedding when we're supposed to have our wedding. I've got a, a wedding dress fitting appointment on the 19th of August that I may not even be able to, like, it may be cancelled. Like, we might still be in lockdown. Um, which is sad. We'll see. But yeah, I love you guys heaps. I hope that you enjoyed this week's vlog. Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. Um, and yeah, just sending you love and well wishes and just everything. I hope that you're all doing okay. Um, yeah, I love you guys and I'll catch you in the next one.